Ask it later by himself. All right, problem number one, final exam. It says integrated algebra one, uh, semester two, final exam review. Remember, our final exam will be two tests where it says two orange contain balls of blue balls and white balls. Earn one. How many does earn one contain? Four blue balls. Four blue and three white. Okay, so that's one. And then two. It says two. Blue and six, two white. Six, two and blue white. All right, now it says pick one from each. There's an important word that you need to see. So the, the, the question that you got to understand is what's the probability of blue? And if you pick the second one, what's the probability that it is? Blue also. So the probability of this one's blue. So what you got to understand here is whether this question is using the word and or or. And this, this test here is using the word and. Because it's saying, what's the probability the first one's blue? And, and the probability that the second one's blue. So it's multiplied. And is multiplied. So four out of seven. Talk to me. Six out of eight. Six out of eight. So four goes in there two times. That goes in there. So that's six fourteenths. Is that a good final answer? So problem number one is three sevens. Guys, number two, we're still not working number two. We're still not working number two the way I really want you guys to do this. I, I still think that in number two, you ought to draw up what it says. It says, choose the statement that is not always true with an isosceles trapezoid. Okay? As they're kind of expecting us to do this, and we don't do this sometimes. When they say an isosceles trapezoid, by definition, a trapezoid has two sides that are and two sides that aren't. What do I mean? Parallel. So there's my two sides that are. Okay, so now I have two sides that aren't parallel, but because this is an isosceles trapezoid, what does that mean about it? Okay, no, that's, uh, we've already discussed parallel. What does the isosceles mean? These two congruent. So there you have it. Are the uh, legs, are the legs congruent? Yeah, these are the bases. This is called a base. This is base one. This is base two. The other two sides are legs. C says the diagonals are congruent. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Remember your, your, uh, that's a Google document that you made, and uh, um, you had to do it with all those little rules on it. And then the base angles are congruent. That's true also. The one that's not congruent is A. A is your answer. Uh, by the way, tell me what is, when is the uh, diagonals congruent? There are some times the diagonals are congruent. Give me a time. No, not in a rectangle. No, I'm sorry. Yes, that is true, but that's not what this question is. It says the diagonals are perpendicular. You're correct on the question I asked. I should have asked the question, when are the diagonals perpendicular? Square? Rhombus is the first one. It's a rhombus. <clears throat> the fact that it's a rhombus is why a square works. So rhombus works, and then after I say, if I say rhombus works first, that automatically gets in square. That's not the second reason I'm looking. The second reason I'm looking for is a there's one other situation. Kite. Kite. The diagonals are perpendicular as well. All right. Problem number three. In question number three, it says a college has nine instructors qualified to teach computer lab courses, which requires two instructors to be present. And it's got to be in the room. How many different pairs of teachers can there be? Combination or permutation? Combination. Combination. If I say Robert and Jacob, got to be in the room. Is that any different than Jacob and Robert being in the room? So did order matter? No. So this is nine. Tell me. C two. Guys, I'm not concerned about when it's written like that. 
What I'm concerned about is when it's written like this. When it's written as 9, 2, that way. Guys, I'm, uh, this is the concept as right now, today, this very day, in my algebra 2 classes, I'm still going over, I erased some combinations right there. I'm still going over with them how to get 9 factorial over 9 minus 2 is 7 factorial, 2 factorial. Remember, there's two formulas. There's a formula for permutation. Eyes up here, please. There's a formula for permutation, which is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And then remember, factorial just means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down, all the way down to n minus n. And just keep going. And then n r and the combination is what we're doing here. Again, why is this the combination? Order doesn't matter. Order doesn't change things. So nine, nine times eight. Excuse me, guys. I, I'm all the way down to seven factorial. Cancel out seven factorial. But you still got two times one on bottom. Check goes into eight four times. Nine times four is. Problem number three. Problem number three is D thirty six. Rewrite the statement in if then form. All rectangles have four sides. So if a figure is a rectangle, if something is with a rectangle, then it has four sides. So I think there it's A. No, number four is A. Three is here, D. Four is A. Remember, that's called a conditional statement. Anybody got a problem? Conditional, converse, inverse is the opposite of a conditional. Then contrapot. That's a presentation. That's a Google presentation. Yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Five, seven, P, one. Anybody? Seven factorial over. Number five is B. Number six says seven factorial. Remember, that doesn't say seven. It says seven times six. All right, again, guys, it's an important issue that you understand that sometimes I'm canceling stuff out. Guys, I'm canceling stuff out in combinations and permutations when I have the same thing on top and bottom. This 7 factorial is 7 factorial up here, but because of the formula for a permutation, because of the formula for a permutation, I, I cancel all of this out. Guys, and to be honest with you, most times I don't even write it. I don't even write it. I just say 7 times 6, and then I'll stop. And you'll go, Coach Hill, why did you stop? That's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is when, as a mathematician, when you're asked what's the formula for a combination, listen to me, what's the formula for a combination, and you go, I don't know. If you don't know the formula, guys, you're not figuring out what a value is. Yes, yeah, you got to know these formulas here. Okay, match each sample with the correct sample in the first 50 students in front of the office. A random. Then what? Uh, then what would be the? Which would be the convenient one? Show up at a survey center. Every eighth student on the class list. Ooh. I think. Uh, I think show up at a survey center would be D. Self-selected. 
Yeah, because you show up or you don't. You, you decide yourself. The first 50 students who enter the office to me seems like it's convenience. Show up at a survey center is self-selected. Every eighth student on a class list is a systematic. Yeah. Okay. No, it, it would be the if to make it random, it would have to be of those fifty students, the first, the sixth, the eighth, the tenth, the twelfth. I would have to be random. I would have to have, you know, I would have to have the list, and then to pick them at random would be just to arbitrarily pick one and then the other. By saying the first 50 students who enter the office, just, I'm, I'm there, they come in, it's convenient. And show, show up at a set, they, set, they decide to show up at the survey center. Uh, every eight student on the class list is, uh, like I said, systematic because it's every eight. They list the class list out and you just pick every eight student. The, here's, our, here's our next Google document, number 10. Number 10 says, the medians of a triangle are concurrent. Milk and cookies. Medians go with centaur. So number, no, it's apples and oranges. Apples is altitude, oranges is orthocenter. Medians goes with, excuse me, medians go with centroid. Perpendicular bisectors, peanut butter, circumcenter. There's one more. Apples and oranges is ortho center. Medians and milk and cookies is uh, medians and uh, centroid. Angle bisectors and in center. Very good. All right, I'll stop right there at 10. What was this answer? All right, I'll stop right there.